So because she doesn't have her own child, she doesn't have a child of her own, that's why when she feels sick, they started looking at her like she has committed an adultery and then they were forcing her to confess, confess, confess. Like it's, it's supposed to be normal for people to fall sick. But then in this situation, she was asked to confess for committing adultery. Sometimes when I look at some of these books, when we review them on this channel, I used to thank God that I was not born in that time because it seems like those people then, they did a lot of work to, um, for us to finally come to this generation that we are, where as a woman, if you are not feeling fine, they will just go and treat you instead of thinking that you are either pregnant or you have committed an adultery or something. So I used to thank God that really a lot of revolution has gone on, like a lot of things has happened because if I was born then, I seriously do not know how I want to survive in that generation. <laughs>
in the evil culture once a person gives you cola not it simply means that the person has a pure heart for you do you understand so that cola not it means a lot of things so that cola not was what broke the walls of security of the king's men that took her and before you know all of them they were looking for mouth to eat and tell her that your father asked you to come back to your house so you could see that if you knew this culture however in as much as she knew the culture she was standing for her own she had her own opinion about the man she wanted so somehow in the book she made money with adizwa and then she and adizwa went to meet her father to pay her diary and that was it and they started living together a few years into the marriage they were together but something was happening if we could not give birth like in the evil culture, a child is a big deal, and a male child is like the biggest deal. But if we does not even have a child, talk more of having a male child. So this was like uh, everybody, this one, that one. In fact, her father had to intervene. I think her father took her to um, a native doctor that gave her something, and then she gave it to a child called a daughter, Oginim. That's the name of the child, Oginim. And before we know, the child died. And for the rest of um, the play were seeing that if Ru was still, or the rest of the book, if Ru was still very much married. And so, at some point, um, I also want to point out and uh, point something out, and that is if Ru was in good relationship with her mother in law, and in fact, a good relationship with her husband's side, something an evil mother will always tell her daughter is that your husband people take them first more than us because if anything happened they are the ones to save you so you could see that if Ru was in a good relationship with her mother-in-law and the rest of the family member so even while she was barry you could still see them supporting her like trying to help her telling her don't worry this one that one and the rest until at, at this way said that he was traveling he traveled to another town got married there and I guess they're giving birth there. If Ru waited for him in her mother's, in his mother's house, she waited, she waited. This guy wasn't coming back, and so she had to leave. With time, she got married to a second husband who happens to be um, an educated. I, I think his name is Gilbert, an educated fellow, and she married this man, and she was living with this man. But still, she still she couldn't give birth. And so this was a lot of disappointment for her. And at this point, a man, you know, the evil, not just the evil culture, I think then in Africa, this childbearing is something that three months into the line, they've started counting for you. Is she pregnant? Is she not pregnant? So I think he couldn't keep up. That was where this saying came out from. It is only a wicked woman that wants to have a husband to herself. So if Ru doesn't want to be classified as that wicked woman, so she welcomed Kolik Amos into her home. And so her husband got married, I think, the second wife and like, thereabouts. And so if Ru was still trying to live with the pain of being a very woman, at the same time, other wives making a um, muscle called mockery of you and the rest, she was just trying to. And one day, out of frustration, if Ru fell sick. And when if Ru fell sick, Instead of them to, you know, do some treatment on her, they just concluded that she must have committed an adultery. Like she must have slept with other men somewhere. Do you understand? That was just the notion. Women were then, it was a patriarchal world. Any smarty men, 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 they believe the men are just innocent. They can always have their way. So it, it was not normal for a woman to, um, to fall sick. So nobody was treated. They just left her and they kept telling her, confess, confess, confess. In the sickness, she was bitter, she was angry, she was everything. Like, what What would she do? It took a friend of her to finally come and start administering treatment to her until she got better. And I think she left that marriage, she was done. If Ru is a good girl on her own, however, she was so unlucky in marriage. I was, um, in this particular book, there is no supposed to be spoiler. I want you to go and read that book. Um, to understand the plight of the Igbo culture and not just the Igbo culture, the African, average African culture. It's going to open you to a whole lot of things about African as a, um, as what's called now, as a culture on its own. And I bet you, and again, you might also want to know what happened to Efuru after leaving her husband's house. Um, 
So I advise you, you should get the book. If 